And then if you'll just give me a couple moments, we're going live, all still, and then I believe that Austin will kick off the show. Have a great time. Thank you. It's time for Tycoons of Small Biz, spotlighting the true backbone of the American economy, the true tycoons of business in America, the owners, founders, and CEOs of small businesses. The show's hosts, Austin Peterson and Landon Mance, are registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Good afternoon, Tycoons of Small Biz. This is Austin Peterson. I'm joined today by Landon Mance, my lovely bearded co-host, along with Corey Yates of Alpha Omega Repair. Corey, thanks for joining us. Guys, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Uh, we're we're excited to have you here. We uh, we were actually introduced to you by another one of our guests, which was which is always great. And you guys, uh, believe it or not, listeners are direct competitors of the guy who uh, who introduced us. And so they they're in the same business, but they're close friends. They understand the importance of working together. That there's plenty of business out there for everybody, and an opportunity to learn things from one another is always a good thing. So. It's always great to see that, and uh, and we're glad that uh, Josh and Joel Zolan introduced you to us and <clears throat> on the show today. Yeah, it's an honor to know Josh. Uh, he is a uh, he is a, a better friend than he is a uh, a competitor, and we uh, we believe in in community over competition. We know that there's a massive pie for us to take our slices out of, and and. Uh, uh, I know that I've piggybacked on many of his fabulous ideas, and this obviously being one of them. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that 100%. I think that uh, it, it's a little odd when people talk about competition when, you know, it, it's a, specifically when it's an industry where there's plenty of room, like you said. It's a very large pie. Everybody can have a large piece, um, and the pie can actually grow if everybody works together to uh, to make that pie grow. Okay. Well, so. Yeah, no, we're, we're excited to have you on. And, and what we usually do, Corey, is have uh, our guests tell a little bit about themselves personally before we jump into the business side. So if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about you, your family. Uh, you can go into a history of, you know, of you as an entrepreneur, father, husband, that sort of thing as well. But uh, we'd love to hear more about you personally before we jump in. Okay, well, uh, way back in, uh, in the early 90s, uh, met, uh, well, first of all, my father was an entrepreneur. I started his own business and I, I began to understand the value of being an entrepreneur, uh, learning how to, uh, write your own paycheck. If you decided to, it, it became about the, the focus and the quality of work that you were doing in addition to the quality of decisions that you were making. And so I, I began to cultivate my entrepreneurial spirit at that point and continued to stair step uh, my way through uh, several different businesses, uh, most of them revolving around the restaurant industry. And uh, my first wife um, uh, and I had a, had a fantastic time. Uh, we, uh, we built a, a couple very large businesses, one in Colorado and sold it, and one here and sold it. And uh, shortly after that, uh, I, I began to realize uh, some of the trials and tribulations that uh, a single-minded focus uh, can create. I'll touch on that a little bit later. Uh, her and I are still good friends, but no longer together. Uh, and uh, began to, to stack experiences on top of one another so that I could build uh, bigger businesses, uh, better businesses, uh, businesses that were were uh, uh, constructed uh, on a stronger foundation based on those experiences. And so uh, worked, uh, continue to every day, of course, uh, work through those new experiences that strengthen that foundation and build taller and bigger buildings on top of them. Yeah, that's great. Any, any children in the mix? 
Uh, I have a 29 year old boy. Uh, matter of fact, I, he's a boy, he's a man. Uh, he, uh, he's a CPA and he works, uh, he works here in town. So, uh, he and I have a, have a bit of a tough relationship. And again, that's probably one of the things that, that comes from, um, single-minded focus and, you know, some of the lessons that I've learned around that. Yeah, no, I, I think that, uh, sorry, Landon, I don't, I don't know if I just cut you off there, but, um, I think that there are some pitfalls and we see it it's a common theme i guess for for entrepreneurs and people who found businesses and build businesses that sometimes like you said you get single focused on on what it is that you're trying to build as a business and sometimes the family and the personal relationships fall by the wayside and it's an unfortunate thing and something that we kind of learn over the years you know i've been i've been an entrepreneur and in business for myself for a little over 20 years at this point and uh, i am still married to the same woman so uh, she's obviously a very, very patient woman, but uh, there are some some difficulties that come along with that and raising children and trying to to balance that because it does take a singular focus, especially early on in building a business. If you want to have yeah. work-life balance, I think it was actually Joel Zolan that talked about if, if, if you want to have work-life balance uh, in the first few years of building a business, you're, you're kind of kidding yourself and, and you're not going to be able to build that business the way that it should be built. Right. Right. I, I, yeah. And I, I think that it, and it, it was really just this business, Alpha and Omega Restaurant Equipment Repair, that I realized the amount of work that had to be done on the front end by prepping your, your safety nets, if you will, the people that love you and that you love so that they understand when you're absent, uh, either, either absent minded, you're there, but you're not there, or, or you're physically not there. And to make sure that everybody that is going to be involved in the process, whether it be directly or indirectly, is up for the game. Um, and and you're right the 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 first couple of years, and we're uh, we're working on being five years old. Uh, September 15th will be five years old. Um, and uh, there's been some collateral damage. Uh, uh, not not much on this one. Uh, that comes from that from that comes from learning and and you know deploying a different set of uh, of uh, of effort, if you will, on the front end, and just trying to be a deploy a higher quality uh, up front. And I'm sure that you know, Austin, Landon. I'm sure you do as well. That the work that you do on the front end um, that uh, that can smooth a lot of those rough edges uh, is well worth it. Um, no matter what you think you know uh, about being able to jump into the business and begin to immediately create income or, or relation, relationships or whatever, the best thing you can do is solidify what you currently have, what you know to be true, um, and, then, and then advance forward from there. Yeah, I mean, not to use uh, one of the most used cliches out there, but if you, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail, right? And so yeah. if you don't, if you don't put that plan together up front, um, you know, I think everybody knows about the statistics of a business failing in the first year, but beyond that, not everybody understands that there's still pretty severe statistics of failure later on because of not having that plan in place and not following certain guidelines and rules and, and, you know, operational excellence type of things that you should be doing in a business to make sure that it, stays viable forever and it's true it's a hard thing to do people kind of settle in and go oh i made it through the first few years revenues there we're good and, and that's just not the case i mean a lot of very high revenue companies still fail still fail later on in in uh, their lifetimes yeah the the learning curve uh it, it remains steep um you know it, i would say well it, it, I would say less so now for me because of the experience, but any new business that I've started, it is a steep learning curve. And you're right. You know, the years, you know, years into it, two, three years into it, uh, you're still assimilating, uh, solidifying your account base and your employee base and your vendor base, the things that you don't really think about at the outset. Uh, you know, a lot of people just think I've got the skill, uh, I've got the knowledge, I've got a couple guys and we're going to, we're going to make a go of this. And uh, it's tough to write a business plan off of something uh, so loosely structured. Yeah, agreed. So 
before Landon jumps in, I know J I know Landon told us beforehand that he wants to ask you about the the previous businesses that you've built and sold. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I think the fact that you're five years into this one, before we go back to the businesses that you've already kind of built and sold, what do you what would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned thus far that got you to five years in this business? Well. Uh, it, it, I'm going to refer back to a couple of businesses that I have not specifically, but a lesson that came out of them. Um, uh, I know this is going to be tough to believe it, but at one point I was severely egotistical. I, I know that's hard to believe, but it, 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 it I've never yeah, met a true. business owner with any. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, probably uh, up until about a decade ago, and, and probably even the front part of that decade, I relish the fact that the entire business revolved around me. Um, I was the head problem solver. I, I washed the bottles. I emptied the trash. Um, when somebody had a tear, I was the one to dry it. When somebody had a, a boo-boo, I was the one to put a Band-Aid on it, uh, so to speak. And as good as that feels, um, it is exhausting. And it is a, it is a trap that will will create 12 and 14 hour days and a lot of stress that you just don't need to have. Um, one of the, you talked about cliches, one of the oldest cliches there is, is, you know, why hire smart people and tell them what to do? Hire smart people and have them tell you what to do. Yeah. And so once I, once I began to learn that, uh, that became inspirational for me so that I could realize hire smart people, make good hires, easier said than done, but make good hires and uh, teach them the structure of what the business is, how you want to present yourself with socially and professionally, and then let them go. Um, and don't micromanage, nudge, 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 adjust as you need, but let smart people create uh, for you. And so uh, it has given me more freedom. The business has grown more, uh, more readily. Uh, because I I can now focus on what I'm really good at, and that's being out in the market, seeing people, solving problems. I tell I tell the people that work with me. I said, if there's a fire that's below your knees, you solve it. If there's a fire that's above your knees, give it to me, and we'll solve it. And so, um, and with the with the crew that I have, I, there's not too many fires above my knees that I have to help them put out or put out myself. And so I'm proud of that. That's that's a learning process that says you don't have to put out every fire. Trust them to do that. Focus on what you do best. And it's uh, it, it's easy to hear. Uh, it's tough to do uh, when you're so used to being a caretaker, a caregiver, uh, codependent, uh, if you will. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'd say if I just about got that one solved. <laughs> I think that's a great way to put it though. The fire below the knees or fire above the knees. That's not one that I've heard before. And I, I think it's easy for people to understand and, and think to themselves before calling you, is this fire below the knees? Can I solve it myself? Has Corey empowered me to solve this myself? And then they do the right thing at that point. So yeah, that's great. Thank you. Hey Corey. So speaking of solving problems, um, our listeners, yourself, Austin, me, you know, we've, we've all started something because we either were looking to solve a problem or we, we could do something better than, you know, than our boss or the company that we work for. So if we can just kind of take a quick step back. So you were going to the University of Colorado, right? And you were selling cleaning supplies, I believe. And I'd love to hear how that transitioned into you starting your first company okay so um i was going to school and i graduated the top 10 percent uh, in my high school and I, I probably belonged in college this is something i want to talk about later by the way is, is college and trade schools and how i now feel about college versus trade schools um, but uh, i was probably one of the guys who belonged in college and maybe should have stayed in college. I wanted to be a, a corporate psychologist to figure out how to how to extract uh, the most out of a workforce, solve problems within within corporations. And I 
I guess it didn't mean enough to me to stay with it because I didn't stay with it. Uh, instead, uh, I had met a gentleman who used to play for the Denver Broncos, and he started a chemical company, a soap company, basically, in Denver uh, after he left the Broncos. And I got connected uh, with him, and he the majority of what he did was within the restaurant industry, pot and pan soap, degreaser, et cetera, things like that. And so uh, I, he and I got together, and we we developed a stronger chemical line and one that revolved around the dishwash business in the in the restaurant industry as well. And so the first business that I had in Colorado was called CD Chemical and built that uh, for from 92 to 97, sold it to my manufacturer there uh, just because I, I wanted to, I, I, I used to come down here and vacation uh, in Arizona uh, with my brother. Uh, he lived down here. He was going to DeVry and I'd come down and, and vacation with him. And I thought this is Nirvana. I said, it doesn't snow here. I don't have to shovel anything. I don't have to go up and down I-25 and wonder who's going to put me in the ditch. Uh, and so uh, when the first opportunity came, uh, we sold the business and moved down here with the express intent of building the exact same type of business here in a flourishing restaurant market. And that's exactly what we did. Started in 97. Uh, the name of that business was Acura Chemical and uh, built it until 2004 and ended up selling it. When we sold it, we were doing somewhere in the two, 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 three range per year. And uh, the gentleman that I sold it to, I'm still very good friends with, uh, did somewhere in the $25 million range in 2019. So there's a legacy there. And again, that's a, that's a, that's a bit of an ego thing. I, I want business to, to continue for a legacy. Whenever I see accurate trucks around town, I kind of smile and nod and I think I'm proud of what he has done with the business. Uh, the, the foundation that he took that I built and, and created a, an absolute juggernaut. Yeah, yeah. So I had a, a question that I, I plan on asking you a little bit later, but I feel like this is a perfect transition right into it. Um, obviously you've had some success starting, growing, running, and ultimately selling some companies. So my question is, from the get-go, from when you are starting these companies, Corey, are you of that mindset to, um, you know, that I am going to grow this company with an end goal of, you know, making it, you know, attractive to an outside buyer, aka, you know, a sellable company? Is that something that you're focusing on from day one when you're starting these companies? Uh, it is. Although I will, I will tell you with every other business that I've had, that has been the express intent. First of all, it's, it's the best thing in the world that you can do, whether you intend to sell the business or not, is to build a, a solid business with, with great books, um, with a solid CPA and lawyer that uh, don't charge an arm and a leg, because someday you may want to sell it. Uh, someday you may need a loan. Someday, who knows what. And so uh, the, whether I intended to sell a business or not, uh, the playbook is exactly the same. Build a clean business with clean books, with good people, a good reputation. And then if the opportunity presents itself to sell it, uh, you're prepared. There isn't a year's worth of uh, mopping up blood that's splashed everywhere to get the job done. You're ready to sell. I will tell you that for, for Alpha and Omega, this is the first business. And again, I've, I've told you about the mistakes that I made on previous ones that made me want to eject. Um, the, this is the first business that I have built where I, I, I trust those that work for me. Not that the others weren't trustable, but I didn't trust them. I, I, I had to do it myself or I had to be involved in it. But this one, I trust. I see that this one has long-term legs. And uh, so uh, I don't intend on selling this one. Uh, if I do, it may be to my business partner or he may sell to me and it, it may be a, the rest of my life legacy. I'm not sure. But uh, I know that we have built a good business uh, with a great client base, good vendors, great employees, uh, and again, clients that, that, that take great care of us. And we're, we're so thankful for that. Yeah, no, I, <clears throat> I think, you know, you, you hit an important point, and I don't know if you heard last week's episode, but we had Lisa Riley on with Delta Business Advisors, and we talked about how, you know, beginning with the end in mind, so to speak, and, and regardless, you need to be building a business, like you said, that's 
that's ready to get a loan if needed, that's ready to be sold if and when you want to sell it. And like you said, I, I think you said, you know, cleaning up the mop, the, the uh, blood, you know, f- you know, from the, from the mop bucket for the year or whatever to, to have it ready to sell. And, and there's a lot that goes into that. A lot of business owners miss it and they're just not ready when the time comes along. And so I think the fact that you can, you've talked about that from the beginning is, is important. Uh, I will point out that you mentioned a CPA and an attorney, but you kind of forgot a really important person in that mix. And that's a financial planner, by the way. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they, is they this where the connection gets bad? And I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Corey, I can't hear you. We're going to have to eject. <laughs> it's been a real pleasure though. Uh, <laughs> you, know, and, you know, that's funny, but uh, one other thing that I will mention, and we'll, we'll talk about this after, and because this is a good time to, to hear from one of our sponsors and, and they specifically work in these two areas. And that's, you mentioned your employees and being able to trust your employees and take care of your employees. And part of that comes with the benefits package that you offer through the mm-hmm. employer, the payroll solutions, those sorts of things. And so we're going to take a, a quick break to hear from one of our sponsors. One of them is Paylocity for payroll and the other one is GBS benefits. And I'm not sure which one's going to come first, but we're going to hear from one of them now. At Paylocity, we deliver more than our Karen, can you turn off enough, please? good reviews. We prioritize your success by covering you with a deep support system to back up our easy to use, innovative HR solutions. Everything we do is designed to support you in reaching your goals. Together, we tackle your day-to-day work so that you can spend more time building the culture you and your employees create. For professionals who crave true partnership, Paylocity is the HR and payroll company that frees you from the tasks of today so together we can spend more time focused on the promise of tomorrow. Let's go forward together. Okay, we're back. So uh, we were talking about employees just before and, and the things that we do to make sure that our employees are there with us and they're locked arm in arm with us moving forward. So can you speak quickly to, to what it is that you specifically do at your organization now? Um, in terms of employees, whether it's providing them benefits or, you know, career tracking, whatever it is that you think that you've done differently this time to where you trust your employees. And part of that's a mindset. It kind of sounds like the first, you know, couple of times you thought I'm in charge. I don't trust anybody else to do it right but me. But, you know, what else specifically are you doing now that's empowering your employees besides what we were talking about with the fires out, you know, whether, like I said, benefits, whatever it is. So I'll open it up to you and let you tell us what you're doing there. Okay, so obviously there's all sorts of different paradigms that you can that you can approach an employee with. Um, I, I used to I used to believe that attaboys uh, were were currency, and they are to a certain extent. But you can't pay rent with attaboys, and so it's ultimately it does become about the benefits and what you're capable of doing. So we set up start and finish lines. Um, that create uh, uh, inspiration, that create motivation uh, for for each line, uh, for each line of work, for technicians, for administration, for dispatchers, etc. Every one of them has a has a goal that stretches their current skill set, challenges what we want them to do, and when they cross those lines, uh, then they are rewarded financially. And they get they get the attaboys as well, and and they may get certificates, they may get all this, a picture on the wall, whatever it is. But ultimately, it comes down to what is it what is it worth to me? One of the things that we've done for our tech force uh, is uh, we've joined CFESA, which is the Commercial Food Equipment uh, Service Association, and we have made uh, there's four modules that revolve around what we do during the day: electric, gas, refrigeration, and steam. Uh, modules and they are college level courses and they are difficult and they're meant to be difficult and so what we have done is made uh, the text raises um, uh, dependent on them passing modules every time they pass a module they get a significant raise uh, a they are a, they create less liability while they're out on the road they're a safer tech they're a more experienced tech uh, we fix faster, we diagnose more accurately, et cetera, while we're out on the road. Uh, 
And so that's an example of stretching their skill sets. Uh, every one of my employees uh, has a bonus structure and, and uh, that is separate from what I just described to you, uh, where they can increase their income anywhere from two to $3,000 a year based on, based on a certain set of, of tasks that revolve entirely around their job. Uh, it's, it's within their skill set. And what it does is it lubricates the interior processes of what we're trying to do. So it's motivating them through, through meeting the everyday mundane things that they must do so that we are well lubricated on the inside. But, and rather, or in addition to, I guess, patting them on the back saying, here you go. You're making this company better, uh, more profitable. Um, we're not throwing parachutes out everywhere we go. Instead, we're, we're putting jet packs on our back everywhere we go. And that's what we want to do to create the momentum that we need to grow. And again, if you hire smart people and say, here's what, here's what we want you to do, go do it. And as long as they do it, they're rewarded. It works. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think, you know, everybody views their rewards a little bit differently, right? And as employers, we need to be able to identify what it is that motivates each individual employee and having one, one incentive plan for everybody even with different roles inside of the company typically doesn't work. Right. And then the other right. thing that I'll just mention is that you've, you know, you've recognized that, or let me say that, let me put it this way. You're a good example of an employer who has maybe didn't know right away, but has understood now that, without good employees who want to be rowing the boat the direction you want it rowing, you're not going to be as successful as you could have been with them. Agreed. With you, right? Employees Agreed. are so important to what we build as employers. We can't do it without them. We're not these big, you know, big, bad, evil uh, business owners the way that we're portrayed sometimes in, in the media. Uh, we, tr we truly are wanting to build something that's important to the economy, and that's also important to our employees as well. Absolutely. I, I take pride in the fact that uh, when an employee, uh, I got an employee right now who's uh, in the midst of buying a house um, and he is so excited about it. And I just, it, I can't do anything, but just pat him on the back and encourage him and tell him uh, when he came to us a little more than a year and a half ago, he was a mess. Uh, he didn't have good training. He had bad credit score. Um, uh, wasn't disciplined in his actions and he wanted to be better, period. He absolutely wanted to be better. And we have, we have taken his motivation and his yearning to want to be better. And he has increased his income 20 grand a year since he started in the last year and a half, but he's earned it. Yeah. And, and again, I, it, I, and I can't remember where I heard this. It, cer it certainly isn't a Coreyism. Uh, I, I heard it somewhere. A good coach knows how to get the best out of every player. And there may be 10 players, and every one of them has a different personality and a different set of motivation buttons that you need to push. And it's up to me and my business partner, Edgar, uh, to be able to find and push those buttons at the right time and uh, with, it, it, with, the right, with the right, do I need to do this? Do I need to do this? And it and it it becomes a situation where you're you have to read the people uh, to be able to get the best out of them. And doing that makes me a uh, a better owner, a better leader. And they make me better, uh, no question, by trying to find uh, the buttons that increase and challenge their skill sets. That um, I, I don't want any of them to get comfortable. Um, and that's that's. Again, that's a learned process. Uh, one other thing that I've learned as we're talking about employees is uh, often it is it is really appetizing to hire the least expensive employee to do the job. And I've learned, <laughs> talking about splash blood, uh, I have learned that uh, that is that is rarely the right way to go. Spend the money. Uh, a lot of times you can eliminate uh, the need for an employee for, for two average employees by getting one superstar and having to, and having to pay for that. And uh, uh, 
I've created the willingness to, to do that now, the understanding of, of the upside of doing that as opposed to as opposed to trying to save a couple dollars per hour um, to make the PL look better, but it never seems to work that way long term. Yeah, it's funny. I actually had that very thing happen to me this week. I had one of my hiring managers reaching out to me saying, you know, there's this great candidate, really like her, want to hire her to do this, but she's asking for 75 cents an hour more than, than what we've, or no, a dollar fifty more an hour than what we typically pay. So I'm thinking I want to, you know, negotiate and, and meet her in the middle. And I said, you know what, if you like her that much and, and you feel like she's going to be doing a good job for us, $1.50 an hour is not going to break the bank, especially if we know we're going to get higher efficiency and, and better sales or whatever it is in that role out of that person. And they, right. they recognize right out of the gate that we saw their value and agreed right. to pay them even though it was more than what we were accustomed to paying. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> I, 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 I believe you. I'm, I'm part of the congregation i'm in man i'm in on that one. Oh, so uh in some of the pre-work that we did for the show you you gave us a little teaser and you basically just said ask me about broken glass so i'm intrigued let us let us know what broken glass is all about awesome i've lost you i'm sorry oh can you hear me a little bit Corey, can you hear me? Spam, full, full, yeah, full on. Yeah, so uh, Corey, Austin, uh, he asked you, uh, we, we want to hear the story behind uh, broken glass. What's that all about? Well, it's it, 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 it's about a three a three decade uh, journey of, of uh, mostly breaking the glass in front of me and then falling on it and crawling across it as opposed to others breaking glass in front of me. and. And, you know, I, there's no other way to, to, to maneuver around it. Uh, again, it's about the mistakes that I made. A lot of them I've already discussed with you uh, uh, regarding family, which is the, which is the toughest one. Um, the inability to understand the negative impact of success uh, was, was one of the things that uh, that cost me probably my first marriage, uh, and a good portion of the, of the now strained relationship with my son, uh, because I ended up, um, divorcing his mother, uh, over the process. It was, it, uh, every conversation we had was about business. Over dinner, we talked about business. When I got up in the morning, it was about business and we became nothing more than business partners. We, we were, we, we weren't husband and wife anymore. And it got to the point where it was irretrievable. And so that had to end. And again, I'm, I'm good friends with her now and she's happily married. And, and so that's, that's fine. But that's, that's one example of broken glass. Um, and of course, there, I think about splash blood. There's a lot of blood, blood splash because of that. Um, uh, I lost family members. Um, associated family members, her her parents, um, again my son. Um, there, th th those all relationships uh, took an immense beating, and so I I make some notes, and I, I I because I didn't want to miss this. Uh, lessons learned because of the broken glass. Uh, being in the moment, understanding, and it's difficult. I'm not saying it's easy just because you know you should, but it's easy. But the ability to turn it off, being in the moment, compartmentalizing stresses and distractions of the work that you're doing, no matter how important it is and how much your life revolves around it, is vital. To be able to compartmentalize it, put it in a box, tie, compartmentalize, and come back to it when dinner's over, when this conversation is over, um, when you know the visit with the parents is over, whatever it is. And so, um, yeah, uh, detach, rest your mind, your body, and your soul. Uh, stay connected to your safety nets. Uh, they will help recharge you uh, if you allow them and you keep them uh, within your communication loop so that they understand when, you're, when you don't roll in until 8 or 9 o'clock at night 
two or three nights a week. Why? Why? What's it worth? What, what are you creating? And if you can communicate what you're creating and everyone sees the value, not this, not, not it's for your own good. You, you won't believe what I'm creating. Well, tell them what you're creating. Tell them what you hope to create so that you're on the journey together. If you're doing it in a disconnected fashion, uh, the long-term uh, outcome of that, at least for me, was uh, was chaos and cost me a lot of money. Uh, it cost me uh, a wife uh, and some friendships. And people looked at me and said, you're successful. Look at what you're driving. Look at where you're living. And I'm like, I don't feel successful. Um, But we learn and uh, move on. Learning. <laughs> that uh, when you learn from the mistakes, that becomes uh, the critical nature and makes what you're doing today, the hard work, uh, the weekends, the nights, it makes it worth it. Yeah. yeah. I, I you know, it. you can hear me now, right, Corey? I can. Yeah. So it, it's. Um... I think it's lessons that we learn along the way and sometimes we learn them the hard way and sometimes we figure it out before it's too late. Right. Um, and, and I, I think a big part of why we do this program is for other business owners to be able to hear from business owners that are going through the same things that they're going through, or they understand what it is that, that they're trying to build. They understand the difficulties, they understand the triumphs. And so we, you know, we share in the difficulties. We also share in the triumphs. Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that, you know, I am still on my first marriage and, and thank goodness I am. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's always been rosy. Right. And, and it's not always been easy. It's been very difficult for my wife, uh, at times. Um, I know that I have not done as good of a job as I could have done along the way. Um, and I, th I think <laughs> even this past week, uh, my family and I took some time and, and got away and went and, and saw my siblings and my parents and, you know, people that we hadn't seen in a long time. And we just kind of did some recreation type activities and, and it was good, but I thought I was doing better than I am because my 16 year old daughter made a comment more than twice uh, about how dad's always working. And so, you know, I, th I think that there's some of the things that you just mentioned to me, the broken glass that we've all left behind at some point is still a lesson for me today. And, and I may think that I'm more successful than Corey in the relationship side because I'm still married, but that's not necessarily the case, right? There, there are still things that each of us can do every single day to be better at those things. And none of us are going to be perfect, but it's a journey. And we all work towards that journey together, whether it's on the business side or the personal side and trying to keep yeah. connected, but separate is one of the hardest things that any of us as business owners have to do. Right. And I, I totally agree with that. And that that's the story that you just told it is an absolute exclamation point on that. I, I used to believe that my personal life competed with my professional life. And the way that I feel now is my personal life, uh, energizes and and revives and inspires my professional life. And I just didn't used to believe that. It was, you know, I, I, I don't want to go do that this weekend. I've got to go over here and do this. And it was, I have to, I've got to. And you don't have to, you don't got to. Um, the, and like I said, I used to believe that it was a competition between personal and professional life from, for the 24 hours in the day. And um, it's not. It's not at all. Yeah. Well, we, we certainly appreciate your willingness to be vulnerable with us. You know, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, I've mentioned this in past episodes. I'm part of a group called Vistage Worldwide. And it's just a group of business owners that get together once a month. 
and we talk about things that are important to us and that we need help from other business owners on, but it's also kind of the only safe space that some of us have to be vulnerable and have conversations with other people who truly understand what it is that we're doing. Right. And it's, it's just as important on the personal side of things. And, and we do a check in at the beginning where you check in on how things are on the business and how things are on the personal side. And we talk through those together and, and, and we're vulnerable about it. And I think sometimes specifically for men, it's hard for us to do that. But I can tell you that it helps me to leave each month at the end of that meeting and, and go forward for the next month and, and realize, you know what, I've got a tribe of people behind me that are going to be here to help me do what I need to do. And it's okay for me to step away from the business from time to time and really focus on the personal side, because when it comes down to it, we're not taking any of the possessions or our businesses with us, right? We're all going to leave this world at some point. We don't take any of that with us. Our, our personal relationships are very, very important. And, uh, you know, even though this is a business, this is a radio program about building businesses. Uh, the personal side is, is way more important than what we're doing on the business side. So thank you for yeah. being vulnerable with us. Hey, Gordon, I'll just, I'll just uh, echo kind of what Austin's been saying. I know that uh, we're going to hear from one of our generous sponsors here in just a second, but Gordon, honestly, just, I just wanted to say thank you for, for sharing all that because I, I can promise you that there's probably a couple people listening to the show and I can promise you that I am hearing and, and, and uh, internalizing you know what you had to say and how impactful that has all been in your life and uh, just so thank you for just showing us the, the human side of, of us as business owners and I know that uh, those those words will resonate with some people and, and ultimately could change some people's lives. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Thank you for the for the the ability to be able to do that. I I feel safe in it. It's like I said, it's it's a story that that I live, and uh, to be able to share it if it helps one. Absolutely. Okay, one. Yep, absolutely. Thank you very much for that. So let's uh, let's take a quick break to hear from our other sponsor, and then we've got a couple more questions for you before we let you go. Whether you're an established local company or a brand new startup, you can count on GBS to be part of your family. We're not just any benefits consulting firm, we're GBS. We have nearly 30 years of experience in group benefits, a strong sense of purpose, and it shows. GBS, believe in something better. GBSbenefits.com. All right, Landon, so I led us down the road that, uh, that led to tears and being vulnerable. So why don't you jump in and, and talk about uh, what inspires Corey going forward? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Corey, um, you've, had, you've had some great successes in your life. You've had some ups and some downs like all of us, but you know, it sounds like just from your experiences and your challenges that you've overcome uh, just really seems like you're in a great place right now in your life. So we'd love to hear, you know, your thoughts on kind of, you know, some of your inspirations from today and how you're going to use them, you know, tomorrow to, you know, make your business better and your life better. Um, I would start probably at home. Uh, I have a, a, a wonderful significant other uh, who, tells me every day uh, that I'm Superman, uh, even on the days when I'm not. And uh, that, that for me is the, is the biggest springboard that I can get into my day um, and, and jump into any problems that exist. Uh, so I give Lisa all the credit in the world uh, for that. Uh, she is, she's incredible. She, she is exactly what I needed at this time in my life. Uh, additionally, uh, the lessons that I've told you that I've learned uh, regarding what what fills me up, uh, not to be uh, missed, is the fact that I own a repair business, um, and that uh, spreads itself over not just my client base, but uh, my friends, uh, my friends' friends, uh, the, the employees that work for us, etc. So 
I want people to to feel good. Uh, I want them to feel good about their life, about their work, about the results thereof. And so they inspire me and I am inspired by them and others to, again, challenge them, to lift them up, to raise them. I want them to feel better after a conversation with me, no matter what it's about uh, than otherwise. Uh, the clients that, that we serve, uh, they are some of the most, they're not some of, they are the most passionate people that I have ever uh, had associations with. Uh, the chefs, uh, the sous chefs, the cooks, the dishwashers, um, uh, general managers that will work 60, 70 hours a week and they just keep going uh, and, and not complain. So what is so bad in my life that I need to complain? And so I look at I look at that sort of uh, passion uh, that they have, and that inspires me to 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 be better and to do more. And the only way that I know to fill myself up is to is to pour into their glass as whatever I have to offer, and maybe nothing, it may be questions, um, but I try not to take. I try to give more than I take, and. Um, uh, that inspires me. That makes me feel better. So I'm I'm out there r repairing restaurant equipment with my company um, and and the great people that work for us. And hopefully I'm I'm repairing relationships and and the way people feel about themselves and others and what they do. So trying to minimize their broken glass. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, based on your your energy levels and and you know kind of. Uh, the fact that you, you you kind of are at this like Yoda kind of level of, of your career right now, where you are are successful and uh, you know in a position to be able to mentor and help other people grow. But um, so definitely excited to hear what you're going to be up to you know next. But before we do that, if we can spend a couple minutes, Corey, um, one of the things that Austin and I uh, focus on for a lot of our business owner clients is is doing, you know, succession and exit planning and helping them to, you know, prepare to, you know, uh, no longer be an owner or operator of their business. And would love to hear your thoughts as you have grown and sold multiple different companies. What are some experiences that you can share with our listeners that that made those exits out of, out of the business successful and, and kind of what are you gonna do differently you know, if you decide to exit out of the company that you're that you're currently growing. Uh, so a, a lot of these, obviously, they 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 morph uh, out of out of ideas and into reality. The the first business I sold to my manufacturer, the, the he it, it was a soft landing. The entire thing it was it was done at his office uh, over a over a cup of coffee. And so that was that was simple. Both of us knew we had a we had a common goal, and um, I, I didn't. It was the first business I ever sold. I didn't have a lawyer. I didn't have a CPA. Uh, my first wife did all the books. You know, they were clean, and uh, my manufacturer knew that. And so that one was easy. Uh, the second one was a little more involved. That was uh, that was Acura Chemical. Uh, that was a little more involved, and and uh, another zero included. And uh, so that was, uh, there was agents involved in that one. There was uh, smart family members involved in that one. And but that one worked. It's same thing. And I'm good friends with him and that business continues. Uh, so we became, and it can't always work out this way, but we became friends through the process of the sale. Uh, because again, I, it, for me, it wasn't, well, let's see if I can squeeze another 50 G's out of this. It was, let's make sure this guy is a success because he had no idea what I did. Uh, it was just a, it was a great business with a good margin and that's what lit his fire. And so for me, I spent the following 90 days with him, didn't charge him a penny, spent the following 90 days with him, uh, riding, riding around with him. Uh, and so if there is a succession plan for that one, it's, and a lot of people just, they want to sell sign their name, get their check, and eject. 
that was that was never what I wanted to do. Again, because it was legacy driven for me, I wanted to make sure that that person was a happy, uh, b successful long term. And after I ejected, if they made the bad decisions after that, there wasn't much that I could do. But I wanted to uh, infiltrate their brain with what made me successful in the business. And so as I as I transitioned into a non-owner uh, on those individual businesses, it was to make sure that they were successful um, by whatever means necessary. And again, traveling with them for 60, 90 days was no big deal to me. I, you know, I got my checks. I didn't need to go back to work immediately. At that point, I began to look for, for other investments uh, or, or whatever I was going to do with the proceeds of that sale. We're, we're uh, not front cash transactions. Say it again, please. Were both of those upfront cash transactions? They were. They were. Uh, the third business that I sold was uh, was an SBA loan, um, and so there was there was a ten percent hold back on that um, for X period of time three three years I think something like that uh, three four years, and the uh, that gentleman unfortunately that I am not friends with. We are again direct competitors. Um, and we're not, we're not, uh, angry, nasty competitors. I just, I have no relationship with them, but I know that the business continues here locally and I'm, I'm happy about that, but that was more, that was a more esoteric, uh, more lawyer driven sale, uh, than I'd had previously. So, and that, and, and it was fine. Uh, we both got exactly what we wanted and he has a successful business, um, uh, out of it. And I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm happy for that. Um, one thing to be to be said for for being able to sell a business and, and uh, extract yourself fairly cleanly is be careful what you do with uh, non compete contracts and and things like that. Uh, don't cut your throat um, on the way out the door. You know a seller is going to want um, uh, either either money or time to make that worth his while to make that sell worth his while. And and so I understand that, and I got that on the way out of the door on that one. Uh, that was one I sold in 2007, Remington Restaurant Equipment Repair. And uh, about 15 minutes after my uh, non-compete was up on that one, we started this one. <laughs> so um, um, a, a reasonable amount of time on a non-compete uh, and a reasonable geographic area, uh, I get and I understand. Um, but um, allowing that to elapse and then being able to start this with Edgar uh, was probably a, a very, very good thing that I did. And, and, and a lawyer suggested it to me. I, it wasn't a suggestion of mine. I, like I said, I, I've had so many smart people in my life that has kept me from, from mistakes that it's a good thing. Yeah, I, th <clears throat> I think, you know, these are some of the biggest decisions from a financial standpoint and emotional standpoint that we make throughout our lives. And so it, it's important and it's worth hiring experts to help you with, with those sorts of things. And, and no to be honest with you, the reason I asked about the, the cash transaction is, you know, I'm starting to see a, a bit of a theme in the way that you run your businesses that uh, Landon and I kind of live to our core. And, and this does not discount operational excellence and having you know, complete plans in place for running your business. But one of the things that Landon and I live to our core is that if you serve the client first, last, and always, let everything else take care of itself, right? right. And so if we right. always put that client first, right, because you sold the business for cash and still rode with the guy for 90 days. Yeah. He was your client, and so were the clients of the business that you sold still your clients and so you were serving them first last and always making sure that everything was taken care of and you can you know for lack of a better way of putting it and without sounding cheesy put your head on your pillow at night and know that you're doing things the right way right 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 and i feel that way and and you're it's very wise for you to say that but it's correct it, there's a lot of people i think that could take the check put it in the bank and say good luck see you later and the both of you obviously me it just can't that's just not because again it's about um i tell people you can't throw a rock in a pond and not make a wave and depending on the size of the rock you're still going to make a wave and so um e either e either you're going all in or you're not and in in those situations i like i said i always wanted them to succeed uh 
part, partly because of legacy, but partly because, hey, they, you know, they pwned up the money. They wrote the check. They, they deserve every fighting chance to be able to succeed. And anything that I can do to gender that is I want to. I wanted to. Yeah. No, I think that's great. And, and if I remember right, you know, you, you started your first company in 1992. I have the right Correct. here. Okay. So, you know, you're 28 years into founding businesses and building businesses. Are you done? What's next? No. <laughs> no. no. I, I like golf, but I, I don't think I can play it five or six days a week. I, I know guys that can and bless their hearts, but um, I, uh, from what I've learned, I, I've never been a facts and figures guy, so I may not be the, the right guy for the position. Um, uh, I go a lot by gut. I can read a PNL and a balance sheet as well as anybody, but uh, I'm, I make a lot of gut decisions. And I want to be a business consultant sometime in the future. That may be 10 years from now. It may be 10 minutes from now. I'm not sure. Well, it's not going to be 10 minutes from now. But uh, <laughs> it, 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 I, I want to be able to, uh, I want to be able to help and transfer what my life's work has been uh, to anybody who wants it. Uh, I think that, I, I don't have all the answers, certainly, but I've, I, I, I haven't had a business fail, knock on wood, thank God, and thank everybody who's, who's contributed to that. Um, and um, I know I know plenty of ways not to do it uh, through experience, and so I absolutely want to do that. Uh, as it relates to Alpha and Omega, we have, uh, we've just uh, uh, created a relationship with a, a national equipment uh, provider that allows us to do installations uh, for them throughout the throughout the Phoenix area. That was a that was a big feather. We were so excited for that, so honored for that opportunity. Um, in addition to that, there's a company uh, across the pond, let's say, that has a uh, a software uh, platform that every restaurant, hospital, uh, facility needs 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 needs. Period for uh, client safety, food safety, et cetera. And we are uh, on the, on the uh, front edge of being the tip of the spear for that in the Americas. So another thing that we're very excited about, uh, like I said, we're on, the, we're on the front edge of it. Uh, uh, two dogs sniffing each other around the hydrant right now, but it looks very, very good. And so we're excited about that. So there, there's there's years of things to do with Alpha and Omega to continue to grow and create relationships and, and happy clients. And so um, I'm only 56, so I, I've got a good, I don't know, 40 or 50 years left in me thereabouts. <laughs> Let's hope. With that kind right. of energy, I don't doubt it. <laughs> Well, Corey, you said uh, you may be you may be open to becoming a consultant in the next ten minutes. With that being said, I'd like to offer you Austin's uh, job as my as my partner. We'll just kind of brush him aside, and you can come join me as a consultant. What do you say, uh, Austin? Can I get a competing offer, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, you wouldn't have to compete with a full head of hair if you were going against. <laughs> We all have Facebook for radio, though, so it's all right. <laughs> Absolutely, I do. So uh, it, it, I can tell you that it's been an absolute honor. Again, I was uh, scared to death. Uh, I love talking to people in one-on-one -on -one conversations, and, and I feel comfortable in that. Uh, you have made this an absolute, truly enjoyable experience. Uh, I appreciate you letting me gush uh, about about myself a little bit, uh, but the key element that I want you to understand is the people that uh, that have helped me along the way, that have put up with me, um, uh, that have contributed uh, to to me being here. Uh, they are chief and key uh, among the successes in my life that I've had. Yeah, no, it, it it's truly been our pleasure, Corey, and we agree with you 100% with uh, with those last sentiments. So. Let's just give you the last uh, 20 or 30 seconds to let people know how they can get a hold of you, website, LinkedIn profile, that sort of thing, so that they can, uh, well, if they need your services. Okay, so um, our service number, uh, which is 24-7, uh, is 480-828-0000. Uh, 
1-800-273-0128. And we've got uh, a couple gals, Tammy and Kayla, that will answer the phone as delightfully as you can imagine, no matter what time of day, God bless them. Um, and a, a full round house of technicians uh, with uh, skills and growing skill sets uh, that can't wait to get out and, and help. And uh, as far as the website, it's www.alphaomegarepair.com. Um, and you asked me about LinkedIn and Twitter. And for the life of me, it's not in front of me, and I can't tell you. That's okay. Corey, Corey, if you search Corey Yates and Alpha Omega Repair, I'm sure we'll find you. Absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you so much for the opportunity. You Corey, thank, thank you. you. It's been our pleasure. You've been listening to Tycoons of Small Biz, proudly hosted by Austin Peterson and Landon Mance. Austin and Landon are comprehensive financial planning professionals specializing in financial, estate, and succession planning for small business owners. Austin and Landon have offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and represent clients in 14 states throughout the country. Join Austin, Landon, and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite podcast platform. All right, we're clear. All right. So well done. <laughs> Holy cow. This is why you two do this show. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And that's not to say your other guests weren't fantastic, but uh, yeah, I that was amazing. Yeah, no, wow. I I really appreciated it. We had we had a good time. We certainly, when things slowed down, and I talked to Josh yesterday. By the way, I know that they're just going nuts right now too. So, um, but when things slow down, let's you know let's grab a bite to eat at one of the restaurants you service and and get to know each other a little better and see what we can do to to help each other. I'd be honored. I'd be honored. Thank you so much for the opportunity for the platform. What a wonderful set of people. This is this again, this is this is the kind of people I want to surround myself with. Your success, um, your encouragement, your inspiration. That's why we do what we do. Yeah. Absolutely. Indeed. No doubt. Let me go ahead and shut off the recording. Get up for the uh video. Sorry about that. I